Okay, uh, so hey guys, how's it going? So, as I mentioned in some of my previous videos, I'm a recent graduate of a Master of Science in Medical Physics, and I'm transitioning into a doctoral degree. Now, throughout the past two years of intense study, I have fine-tuned a lot of my studying habits, and I picked up a few tips along the way that I think would be valuable for me to share. You know, so I thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool to create a like an accessory video highlighting some of these tips. So that's what I decided to do. So this video is going to be focused towards um, a new medical physics graduate student, or um, perhaps uh, prospective students for medical physics uh, who are considering entering the field of the study of medical physics in the future. Okay, so here are my 10 tips for uh, new medical physics students. Okay, so this is tip number one. Uh, tip number one is going to be create a list of important formulas and concepts. Okay, so ideally when you're entering a medical physics program, what you want to do from the very first semester is create a, what would be a number of sheets of important formulas and concepts. Um, you're going to want to follow through with this concept until you know, you're, you're done your graduate. Um, so, the reasoning for this is because, you know, a lot of the exams within the field of medical physics and your graduate program are going to be cumulative. Uh, your, your boards will be cumulative, and the master's exam, your, your PhD qualifying if you decide to take it. Um, you may also decide to take uh, additional certifications. Not to mention all the exams in your program, if I, if I forgot to mention that. But, but the idea is that a lot of these exams are going to have cumulative elements. So you don't want to be consistently like flipping back all the time over your notes um, to refresh yourself with formulas uh, from the past. So this would be a, a very large waste of time. Um, so I actually have my some of my formula sheets here uh, with me. I'll kind of, I don't know how well you guys would be able to see them. I have a lot of them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how well they'll come up, um, but they're they're very full. I think I have about thirteen of them. So, you know, at this point, if if I had to write an exam tomorrow, I could review these formula sheets and concepts. It only take me about three hours, and I would be good to go for pretty much all the formulas and the main concepts. Okay, so. Um, Tip number two is going to be, <clears throat> it's going to be uh, stay consistent with your, your work and your readings, but make sure you don't like overextend yourself or overwork yourself. Okay, so, so this is something I used to do a lot uh, when I first started out the program. You know, I, I, I'd take a work day, I'd start first thing in the morning and, and work until bedtime. You know, and it would be some huge amount of hours. But the problem is that if you keep doing this, you're basically, you'll find that you're overworking yourself and your productivity will significantly drop. You know, you won't be as eager to get up each day and uh, you'll be eager to get to work right away. So basically what I do now is, I pretty much work every day, like seven days a week, but I make sure that I never overextend myself. You know, I always make sure I get my breaks, I get time to exercise, and I get a little bit of time at the end of the day um, just dedicated to myself. Um, so, you know, basically, even if I'm on a roll, I'm getting lots of work done, I, I'll force myself to stop around a particular time, um, just because it, it will allow me to know that, you know, at, at this point, I can, I can tell what time, if I go past it, uh, I'll, I'll be tired the next day, and what time, you know, to, to call it uh, enough work for that particular day. I am still getting in full work, enough. that's the idea. <laughs> Okay, so tip number three is going to be make sure you do schedule um, like fun events into your daily or, week, or weekly schedule. Now, I'm not referring to like going on day trips or you know lots of vacations or anything that, that takes a long amount of time. I'm referring to short things that you can put in your daily work routine that'll uh, keep you fresh and make you happy, basically. Um, 
So a couple things I do is I like to go on hour long walks throughout my day. And you know, I can listen to music. If I'm in a crunch for time, like if, if I if I do have a big exam, I can actually study while I'm walking. Uh, and I, I can actually do this. I know there's some people who say you can't do it. I, I can do it. I, I do do it <laughs> routinely. So um, that's an example. Um, another would be for special treat, I do like to go lap swimming. Very nice um, to break up a long day of study. Um, also, at the end of the day, I do like to sometimes play computer games. I find it to be personally very fun. Um, obviously, you don't want to do this for a whole bunch of time, and you don't want it to, because you're having fun, you don't want it to allow you to stay up later than you normally would. But with that being said, if you're, um, if you enjoy playing computer games, you can play it for an hour or so, and it's a really great way um, to basically keep you fresh and um, you know to keep you fresh and eager to work for the next workday. Um, oh, um, also, like I've tried to eliminate these things from my work schedule, like uh, the walks, you know, playing a little bit of video games at the end of the day, those those events. It doesn't actually work out too good, you know. Like I, I found, it, if I eliminate these things, I'm very, you know, I feel pretty sluggish the next day, not as eager to work. And meanwhile, if I just incorporate these uh, tasks into my work schedule, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go, ready to rock and roll next day. Okay, so tip number four is going to be, generally speaking, don't take many days off. But after you've accomplished a, you know, a major project or you've written a major exam, take the day off. Okay, so um, you know, I think you'll find there are many times in that where you're going to be working on studying for large cumulative exams. You know, take for example the board exam. Uh, so you're going to be studying a long time in advance. Because you're doing this, you're often thinking about the next task. You're thinking, oh, I can't wait to write this paper. But, so you, you want to, after you write the board exam, you want to jump right in and write that, you know, if you want to write a paper, you want to directly after you write the board exam, you're eager to. But the problem is, is, um, you know, I think what will happen is you'll find, you'll, you'll get a couple of days into your, your new project and you'll, you'll kind of drain off. Um, you'll tire yourself out. I found that to be the case in many instances. So, what I do now with my schedule is I, I make sure I absolutely, uh, you know, I do what I can to, to book the next day off after I've, after I've written a major test or I've accomplished a major project. I, I book the next day off. I don't really do anything the next day. Um, I personally found it to work very well. Okay, so for tip number five, uh, it's going to be incorporate exercise into your study routine and also you know watch your diet and you it may actually be smart to take a multivitamin. Okay, so if you take a step back and look at your work schedule, I think you're gonna find you're gonna be doing you're, you're going to be sitting a lot a lot of time in, in a given day. Um, an example might be my schedule. You know, like I get up, I, I work a couple hours at a part-time job. And then, uh, you know, I'll get ready, I'll, I'll, I'll drive to school, I'll work, you know, let's say three, four, five hours on paperwork and studying. I'll go to class for a couple hours, I drive home, work three, four, five hours on paperwork again. Uh, so in a given day, I could be sitting anywhere, you know, 10, 11, 12 hours per day. That's a lot of sitting. Um, so. So, you know, I, I think it's a good idea for your short-term or your long-term health to incorporate some kind of exercising into your routine schedule each day. Uh, my favorites are going to be walking, jogging, swimming, and biking. Light weights, but obviously be careful to not overexert yourself. You know, you, you might find you're, you're really getting into exercising too. You want to really start working out hard. I mean, try and stay away from that if you can. Because the thing is, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to spend a lot of energy on exercising, but you still want to be getting exercise. You know, you don't want to be sore. You don't want to wake up the next day, or you know, for at the beginning of a week, and you know your legs are kind of sore. <laughs> so you want to try and stay away from that. 
Um, also, of course, you got to kind of watch what you eat a little bit more because you are sitting so much. Um, if you decide to eat a bunch of pizza and sit all day, it's going to be very difficult to wear the pizza off. Also, you may find it to be a bit more challenging to eat a balanced diet. So in that case, it, it may be wise to take a multivitamin. In my case, I do take a multivitamin. Okay, so tip number six is going to be uh, put little carrots into your work schedule. What, I'm, what I mean by carrots are basically fun events to spice up your weekly routine. Uh, that would be different than like walking, you know, little things like that. So something a little bit different. Um, an example I, I might do is, let's say there's a video I want to watch. A lot of times the movies nowadays are three hours long. So, I mean, in a work day, I'm not, I'm not going to be watching a three hour video. Um, but what I could do is I could, you know, space it up into one hour intervals. I could do that. Watch one hour per day for three days. I get to see the video I want. I'm happy. Um, tend to, tends to work very well. Another thing I might do is I like uh, UFC. I like to follow UFC. If there's an event going on, I won't watch the event, but I will keep track of the score. And if there's um, like a, one particular fight I really want to see, I will watch that. Little things like that. Uh, tip number seven is going to be Sometimes you just purposefully should incorporate new things to try and get away from monotony. You know, keep that on your mind. Um, so, you know, when you have a consistent work schedule and you're working, you know, all the time, it's important to sometimes incorporate new things to make up monotony. Uh, some examples that I do are sometimes I purposefully study at different locations. You know, I have a number of different locations I can study at. I could study at my school in a library or other areas at my school. I have some places uh, near where I live. I can study in my room. I tend to mix it up to keep things fresh. Also, um, another thing I could do is I, if I go for a walk, I walk to a different location. Little things like that. Try and mix up monotony. Monotony is not your friend. <laughs> okay, um, so tip number eight is going to be, um, you know, from the start of your program, Make sure that you're you're taking good notes and you're and you're filing them away. Ideally, your notes are digital, so you're typing them up or you're writing and then typing them up. But obviously, you can't do this. You can't really do the calculations. It would take too long. Um, keep all your your PowerPoint lectures. You make sure you, you collect all the PowerPoint lectures. You make sure you do have them all. Keep them in a nice neat folder on your desktop. Also, you know. Um, any videos you have access to, any accessory um, write-ups, make sure you, you basically save everything. Make everything really, really neat. Uh, there have been, you know, there have been countless times where I'm, I'm reading over old lectures or, or, or I, I want to read over a particular aspect. And I'm very happy that everything, I, you know, all my notes, um, videos, everything is very intact. Everything is very, very neat. So I, I can review anything. Okay, uh, so tip number nine is going to be uh, basically register so that you can, you can rate the ABR at the one year mark. Um, so the main idea behind this is that if you do by chance not pass the ABR part one, it's not a big deal, you know. Probably you, you'll know what, you know, what part of your study went wrong or which aspect, and uh, you'll be able to restudy and pass it at the second year mark. And that's not a big problem because um, a lot of times the Master of Science graduate degrees are often two years long. Um, so if you're going to a residency, it be typically you know it's at the two year mark. If you decide to go with a doctoral degree, two year mark. So it, it tends not to be a big problem. Um, you know, it, but it, I mean, if you write it the first time at the second time and you do by chance fail, it's not a huge problem, but I mean, my, my advice would be to aim to write it for the first year. So when it's, when the material is more fresh in your mind, then you can kind of, you can kind of move on with the gradual progression of the material. Mm. Oh, also, um, I am going to be creating a, 
a quick lecture on some tips for studying for the ABR. So, uh, you know, if you want, if you want to, you could watch it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, tip, tip number ten is going to be uh, familiarize yourself with the AAPM website and also with getting access to the different, um, you know, publication journals and. Okay, so when you're in a medical physics graduate program, there are going to be many times when you're going to be referring to reports. Uh, you have TEGs, uh, task group reports, MPPGs, medical physics practice guidelines, NCRP, ICRP reports, NRC reports, uh, and many more. So you should know, you should be familiar with them and know where to find them. You could find most of them on the AAPM website under publications and then under, I believe there's a button then to click for reports. Uh, another thing that I found particularly tricky to get access to are the uh, different medical physics and radiation oncology journals. So for medical physics, the two most common journals are the JACNP, Journal of Applied Clinical Medical Physics, and the International Journal of Medical Physics, uh, research and practice. Um, but also you may want access to uh, like on um, ASTRO, which is Radiation Oncology, International Journal of Radiation Oncology, Biology and Physics, also known as the Red Journal. And the Red Journal has subsidiaries too, access to those. There's also lots of European journals out there and there's many more. Um, but the thing is, is that your university may not have access to all of them. So it's important to you know, be familiar with, with what you can access and what you can. Uh, you know, because you know, as a student, you're probably not gonna be too anxious to be uh, you know, spending additional money on journals. Okay guys, uh, so that's my 10 tips in total for newly enrolled medical physics students. Um, I hope that you found my tips uh, at least relatable and of value, uh, and hopefully something that you can implement into your uh, setting within, a graduate, within the graduate program. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you for viewing, and hopefully you have an excellent educational experience while in your medical physics graduate program. Okay, thank you. Bye.